Welcome to today's Let's Talk Quality webinar, Resilience, Bouncing Back When Faced with Adversity. My name is Beth Simon. I'm a program quality assessor for the Pennsylvania Key. I've included my email address if you want to reach out with any questions or comments regarding the webinar content. If you've not read the corresponding blog article related to this topic, you can find it on the Program Quality Assessment Team blog at www.letstalkqualitypa.com and search for Resilience. Previously recorded webinars and more information about program quality assessment in Pennsylvania can be found at www.pakeys.org. Thanks for joining us today. When you hear the word resilience, what do you think of? Take a minute to think about this word resilience and what it means to you. If you do a quick Google search, you'll come up with a lot of different definitions. The definition of resilience that I'm going to use moving forward today is from the Devereux Center for Resilient Children. Resilience is defined as the ability to recover quickly from difficulties. It's also defined as the ability of a substance or object to spring back into shape or bounce back or elasticity. Merriam-Webster also defines resilience as the ability to bounce back from misfortune or change. Resilient people tend to have something in their lives that helps them overcome challenges and move on in positive ways. Another way you can think of resilience can be thought of as the ability to adapt to difficult situations. When stress, adversity, or trauma strikes, you still experience that anger, grief, and pain, but you're able to keep functioning, both physically and psychologically. And that definition comes from the Mayo Clinic. Change is said to be the only constant in life, the only thing that we can depend on. Have you heard this before? Changes of seasons, changes in human growth and development, height, weight, the gaining of knowledge. Changes in the, in the children you care for can be most obvious, from the baby unable to sit up to her being able to stand or walk in the matter of only a few months. There are two types of change that we're going to talk about today, positive change and negative change. Positive changes are similar to things I mentioned earlier, like growth in nature, from the planting of a seedling to the first flower that blooms, or the fruit or vegetable you're able to harvest. This also includes changes in life, like falling in love, getting married, having a baby, getting a new job, moving to a new apartment or a new house. Then there's negative change. These are things that can really throw us for a loop and have us feeling out of control. This could be being diagnosed with an illness, losing a job that you love, separation or divorce, or even the illness or death of a loved one. Although positive change can be stressful at times, we can see that it's temporary and that the outcome outweighs that stress. Negative change is often more difficult to overcome because it often means the loss of something or someone, the end of something or difficulties to come. Let's look at positive change a little more closely. Although positive change can be stressful at times, we can see that it's temporary and that the positive outcome of that stress outweighs the stress of the change. Positive change is usually quick to recover from and it's easy for you to get back on track without missing a beat. For instance, the months of wedding planning will result in a beautiful wedding that will be a celebration for you and your significant other. The challenges of organizing your finances will result in a new apartment or a new home that will give you more space you can decorate and make your own. Positive changes can also be seen in our daily lives, like when a party or meeting is canceled that you were dreading to go to in the first place. Think about when you were a kid and there was a snow day or school was canceled. That could be a fun positive change, right? Even as an adult, when there's bad weather and you get to stay home, maybe you're, you get excited to have another cup of coffee, sleep in, start a new book, or even binge a new Netflix series. In a childcare setting, positive change may be finding out that you have extra outside time today or that all your children have been picked up earlier than normal. Positive change can cause stress, but it's exciting. It's something that you're looking forward to or that you're happy about. I'd like you to take a few moments to think about positive changes in your life and how you handle those situations. What are some types of positive change that you might experience in your work with children? What are some positive changes you experience in your personal life? Do you typically need help from others to overcome or work through those positive changes? We don't usually need help bouncing back from positive change, but that's also okay if you do. 
It's important to be self-aware and know what you need, especially if you need help to deal with that positive change. Now let's look at why you're really here. Negative change. Negative change can impact us emotionally, behaviorally, and physically affecting our health. Negative change can be something that you're dreading and not looking forward to, or it may come on unexpectedly out of the blue. Negative change could be pretty drastic, like a divorce or the death of a loved one, losing your job, financial strains, or it could be something frustrating like losing your keys, getting caught in the rain, missing a flight, or getting a flat tire. Negative change can also be considered in the challenges we face in our work and personal lives. The examples I mentioned or adversity that we are faced with requires us to have some strategies to overcome and put our resilience into practice. Again, I'll ask you to reflect on negative change that you're currently experiencing or have recently experienced. What are some negative changes that you experience in your work with children? Or what are some of the challenging aspects in your work? Like not being able to calm a fussy baby, toddlers who are not sure how to interact with their peers yet, preschoolers who need more guidance and reminders about how to regulate their growing bodies. Are you having challenges communicating with a coworker? Is there a time of day that is more stressful or challenging in your classroom? What's a negative change that you've experienced or are currently experiencing personally in your life? Do you or did you need help from others in overcoming the negative change you experienced? Oftentimes, negative change or the challenges we experience can have us relying on friends and family or even the kindness of strangers to overcome this negative event. Resilience is how we're going to handle or let that negative change affect us. When you're coming out of the grocery store and you get caught in a rainstorm, now it's a good rain, a good downpour. Do you slow down and wait for the storm to pass? Maybe even think, wow, this is great. My grass really needs this. Or do you curse, get angry, and stomp your feet all the while getting soaked as you trudge back to your car? Have you ever been at the airport and had your flight canceled? If not, you can imagine how stressful this can be. Being in a strange city or maybe country, trying to get home when you don't have control of the situation. This happened to me not too long ago. I excitedly arrived at the airport to head home from a week moving my niece into college, excited to get home to my husband that night and missing my dog, only to discover my flight had been canceled. I accepted the situation, found a vacancy at a nearby hotel, and started the exhausting process of rescheduling a new flight out the next day. This isn't fun or easy, but would it make it better if I cried? Would it make it less frustrating if I cursed out the ticket agent? Would she immediately say, oh, Miss Simon, now we have a flight and we'd be happy to get you on it right away? I don't think so. So I disappointingly went to the hotel, I found a cute little restaurant to have dinner and made the most of my extra night away. Some of my fellow passengers though, didn't react how I did. I watched as a man caused a scene. It was basically an adult throwing the tantrum of a toddler. Was the result he had any different than mine? No. Of course, he'd bounce back from this negative change, right? He had to at some point, didn't he? But it took him far longer to recover than it did for me. What did I have going for me that he didn't have? Resilience. You've heard this term a few times now as I've spoken. The ability to adapt to negative change and recover from it quickly is also called bouncing back. Think of your resilience as a rubber band. Sometimes we get stretched to the limit, but come back into shape over a period of time. What if you stretch that rubber band beyond its limits? It'll break, right? When it comes to resilience, we wanna look for strategies that when we are stretched, help us get back into shape and do it as quickly and as effortlessly as possible. We wanna avoid getting to that breaking point. In that airport situation that I mentioned before, I was stretched. I had a long week, I was anxious to get home, but the airlines had a different plan for me. My rubber band was pulled tight, but it didn't break. Can I say the same for the other passenger at the airport? Bouncing back requires some intentionality, some planning, preparedness. It takes strategies that I practice during life's everyday little annoyances and inconveniences. When it's cold and the dog still wants a long walk, I practice resilience. When the check engine light comes on, I practice resilience. 
when my flight is canceled, when plans change that I'm looking forward to, or when health is in question, resilience. And I have a whole slew of strategies that I use to cope so that I don't get stretched to my breaking point. We just talked about our resilience being like a rubber band, but you can also think of it like an umbrella. When the skies are cloudy or you hear the weather forecast, you grab an umbrella to be prepared if you get caught in that rainstorm, right? There's so many analogies you can use. Like when, like when I take a long road trip, I make sure to have a spare tire. When you plan to be in the sun all day at the beach, you wear sunscreen. When I go for a long hike, I take water, some food, and I check the map of the trail I'm going to before I get out there. You can think of anything in your life where you might plan ahead before you go on a walk with the children in your care. You probably review the rules on how you stop at the intersections, look both ways before you cross the streets. This is your umbrella at that moment. So think of your resilience as that umbrella. The adversity raindrops just bounce right off your umbrella when you're using strategies that protect you from really being stretched to your limits. Now is the time for you to reflect on how you handle negative change. Do you already have some strategies in place that you tap into that help you recover more quickly? Are your current strategies effective? Are you struggling and more like the guy at the airport? So how can we be better prepared for life's little and sometimes big challenges that we have to face? The Devereaux Adult Resilience Survey, or DARS, is a free resource you can use to reflect on your own resilience and the areas where you excel and helps to identify areas you could work on to improve your bouncing back skills. The DARS is a 23 question checklist that will help you identify your personal strengths and areas of growth related to building your resilience. The survey looks at four areas, relationships, internal beliefs, initiative, and self-control. The survey provides simple statements such as, I am open to new ideas, or I set limits for myself. You would answer with not yet, sometimes, or almost always. For instance, in relationships, it provides some simple statements like, I have good friends who support me, I provide support to others, and I trust my close friends. For internal beliefs, some examples include, my role as a caregiver is important, I'm creative, I'm lovable. Initiative is the category with the most statements that includes things like, I communicate effectively with those around me, I have a hobby that I engage in, I'm able to say no, or I can ask for help. The last category is self-control. Examples include, I set limits for myself and I'm flexible. Can you predict when and what you're going to need to handle negative change all the time? Of course not, and how boring would life be? There are always things that are going to come up when you least expect it. You're going to encounter setbacks. It's how you deal with them that will show your resilience. If you are already practicing some healthy strategies in your daily life, you'll be more apt to manage these negative changes by stretching your rubber band, but not coming to a breaking point. This is a time for you to reflect and think about some of the ways that you're already tapping into your own resilience and your own strategies. The DARS is related to a book by the Devereaux Center for Resilient Children called Building Your Bounce. The book provides you with the DARS checklist that not only asks you reflective questions about your resilience, but it also provides you with some strategies to build your resilience in the areas that you're struggling in. For instance, I have trouble saying no. There are some simple strategy suggestions for this under the initiative section. The first is to delegate. There's only so much I can do in my 24 hour day. What do I myself have to do and what can I ask someone to do to help me? Or maybe when I'm asked to take on an additional task, I say, let me think about that before immediately saying, sure, I can do it. Giving myself a little time to think if I have time and can complete the task well before committing myself is a strategy I can use to not feel overwhelmed or stressed out. If I think it over and have time, great. If I don't, I can go back to whomever asked me and let them know I have other priorities and can't commit to taking on something new right now. This sounds easy, right? But it can be a lot harder to put into practice. Think of your relationships. Being and feeling connected is a basic human need. Do you have a spouse, partner, friends, or family you can share problems and worries with who are trustworthy? Our work with children, if nothing else, shows us the importance of those relationships. Do you provide the same support to others that you expect from them? 
having healthy relationships provide us with more laughter, a support network, someone you can truly share your honest emotions with, and relationship, relationships also provide fun. Have you ever had a great date with your significant other or a trip and come back feeling recharged and happy? These are strategies toward resilience. Thinking of your internal beliefs, is your position at work rewarding? Think about what you do and what your takeaway is. Think about how you speak to yourself. I like this quote from Lisa Hayes. Be careful how you're talking to yourself because you are listening. Be kind to yourself. Is it easy for you to take a compliment? Do you set or have goals and follow through with them? If you don't, what could you do to be more accountable? Some strategies for initiative include thinking about your communication. Effective communication is a resilient strategy. Effective being the key word. We communicate with a lot of people throughout the day, but is it effective? Is there someone who you feel like you can't communicate with well? Consider why that is and what you can do to improve that communication. Do you look at a problem and come up with multiple solutions? And are you good at thinking outside the box? There are usually several ways to solve a problem or concern. Do you look into all the avenues? Do you have a way to feed your mind and soul through learning or being physically active? Do you have a hobby you enjoy? Do it. So often we take up hobbies, then it becomes another chore. Get through the tough part of taking time out of your day for that exercise class or getting the supplies together for whatever it is you enjoy and actually do it. And finally is self-control. We've talked about the one constant in life being changed throughout our time together. We may, we may not be able to predict or control change, but we can control our response to it. Practice strategies like listening to music to unwind or that matches how you're feeling. Find your hype song and play it. What song gets you really pumped up? And provide practice flexibility. Not yoga, but practice your reactions to disappointment. If a date you were looking forward to gets canceled, how do you handle that? Maybe the supplies that you order for your classroom aren't approved or you only get some of them. How can you be thankful and grateful for what you do have and be excited about those things? I truly hope that you're thinking all of these things I'm talking about are easier, or maybe you're saying to yourself, I already do that. They're easy in theory. It's more difficult to practice these strategies in the heat of the moment when emotions are high and you're feeling tense or stressed out, stretched to your limit. It's true that some people may be born better at bouncing back than others, but that doesn't mean if that if you aren't good at it now, that you can't get better. We've all heard the saying, practice makes perfect, but I prefer practice makes progress. Just because you practice strategies to cope with adversity doesn't mean you'll do it perfectly or hit the mark each time. It doesn't mean the way that your friend, partner, or family member handles negative change is better than your way. You'll need to find what works for you. Finding what works for you requires intentional reflection and practice to bounce back and develop your own resilience. Building resilience strategies is not an overnight process. It's ongoing. You'll need to put in the time if you want to see the change and become a more resilient person. Don't forget to celebrate the small victories. Pay attention to what's working for you. Did you and the person you have difficulty communicating with seem to be in sync today? Small win. Were you calm when there was a fire drill that disrupted a learning activity or snack time today? Small win. Did you offer support to a friend or coworker who was struggling? Another small win. Did you take up a new hobby or dive into a hobby you haven't picked up in a while? Did you laugh or learn something new? All small wins that are helping you in bouncing back and building your resilience. Are you feeling stronger, more capable, more able to adapt to change and bounce back quicker? Be sure to take note of these times when you're feeling stretched but are able to bounce back successfully and celebrate these wins. If you would like to learn more about resilience and how to bounce back from adversity, please check out the Devereaux Center for Resilient Children or the Let's Talk Quality blog. Both were linked earlier in the webinar. I'd like to thank you for joining me today in thinking about your personal resilience and considering how important these strategies are in overcoming change.